you begin, carefully review all warning and risk factors before starting the assembly of your 1264 and 1296 PWC vertical boat lift. The following tools will be needed for assembling the lift. Fully read and understand each step before proceeding with that step. For ease of assembly, find a flat area with plenty of room to assemble the lift. The following tools will be needed for assembling the lift. Two 9 16 inch wrenches. Two 3 quarter inch wrenches. Measuring tape. Sharp knife or razor. Tin snips to open bundle. Note, only hand tighten bolts and nuts until lift is completely assembled. Slide blue caps on uprights as shown. Insert all four leg posts into foot pads. Secure using one 3 8 by 2 and 3 quarter hex bolt and one 3 8 brass nut in each place. Insert leg posts into V side lift and opposite lift side as shown. Use one 3 8 by 2 and 3 quarter hex bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass nut for each leg post. Place the B side lift and lift opposite side about 5 feet apart as shown. Attach one bottom beam to the front of the lift sides. Secure to each side with one 3 8 by 3 and 1 quarter hex bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass flange nut. Attach the other bottom beam to the rear of the lift sides. Secure to each side with one 3 8 by 3 and 1 quarter bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass flange nut. Attach both lift braces to the bottom beam with one 3 8 by 4 hex bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass nut. Attach one lift brace to the T-slot on the front of each lift side with one 3 8 by 1 and 3 quarter carriage bolt, one 3 8 flat washer, and one 3 8 brass nut. Attach by sliding bolt into T-slot then placing brace over bolt and gently tighten. To square the lift frame, take two measurements between the lift sides diagonally. The two measurements should be the same. Once lift is square, tighten all bolts. Insert press-in caps into lift braces and lift side diagonals. Set right side rack in the lift V side and left side rack in the lift opposite side, as shown. Set thimble end of cable in the slot of the front of the lift side bottom. Secure with one 3 8 by 3 and 1 quarter hex bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass nut. Insert the eye bolt end of cable through the hole in the lift side top. Secure with one 3 8 flat washer and one 3 8 brass nylock nut. Attach the rear back to each rack side. Secure at each end with two 3 8 by 2 and 1 quarter hex bolts, four 3 8 flat washers, and two 3 8 brass nylock nuts. Set thimble end of cable into the slot in the rear of the lift side bottom. Secure with one 3 8 by 3 and 1 quarter hex bolt, two 3 8 flat washers, and one 3 8 brass flange nut. Insert the eye bolt end of cable through the hole in the lift side top. Secure with one 3 8 flat washer and one 3 8 brass nylock nut. Set the front rack in place and attach to the rack sides. Secure at each end with two 3 8 by 2 and 1 quarter hex bolts, four 3 8 flat washers, and two 3 8 brass nylock nuts. Insert the eye bolt end of cable through the hole in the lift side top. Secure with one 3 8 flat washer and one 3 8 brass nylock nut. The other end of the cable will be attached to the winch. Route the winch cable in between the two cross bolts of the winch. Insert one quarter by three quarter carriage bolt into square hole of winch hub and loosely attach cable clamp to carriage bolt using one quarter nut with star washer. Insert the winch cable through the hole in the winch hub and create a loop around the carriage bolt. A vice grip may be used to clamp the end of the cable to act as a handle to help bend around and under the cable clamp. Once in place, securely tighten the one-quarter nut with star washer. 
Attach the winch to the winch upright with two 3 8 by 3 and 1 quarter hex bolts, four 3 8 flat washers, and two 3 8 brass nylock nuts. Thread wheel clockwise onto wheel shaft until it touches the brake pad. The wheel must be fully against the brake pad, and a clicking sound must be heard when turning wheel up. Using a sharp knife or razor blade, cut a small hole in the middle of the wheel, where the wheel sticker covers the attaching bolt hole. Secure wheel to winch using one 5 16 by one nylock bolt, one 5 16 flat washer, and one wheel spacer. Thread excess cable onto winch hub by turning the wheel clockwise. Be sure cable wraps tight and uniformly on hub, with each strand lying snugly next to the adjacent strand. Keep tension on the cable by holding it tight when turning the wheel to develop a proper wrap. Do not allow cable to wind up loosely on hub. Position the bunk bracket on front and rear racks to fit watercraft. Secure each bunk bracket with one one half brass square nut and one one half by one and one quarter set screw. Attach Shoremaster carpeted bunks, sold separately, to the bunk brackets with one three eight by two and three quarter hex bolt, two three eight flat washers, and one three eight brass nut in each place. Make sure all nuts and bolts are firmly tightened. There are four cables with eye bolts and nuts that must be adjusted to properly level cables. These eye bolts are all located near the rear uprights, as shown. Turn wheel so front rack beam raises about six inches above the bottom of frame. Adjust cables so all corners of rack are the same distance from frame. Measure the water depth of the position you want to locate the lift. Measurements should be taken at both the projected position of the end nearest shore and the end furthest from shore. Before installing, adjust lift legs so that the boat can float into position before raising, while still allowing a high enough position that the boat can be fully raised up and out of the water. Carry, lift, or slide the lift into position alongside the dock. Ensure that your lift is level. Measure the distance from the top of the crossbeam to the water surface. The distance at each of the four corners of the lift should be within two inches of each other. If they are not, adjust the legs accordingly. Be sure the lift rack and cradles or bunks are positioned below the water surface so that they will not interfere with the boat floating into position. Properly balance and center the boat on the lift prior to raising. The boat should be positioned with the center of gravity near the middle of the lift. For most rear engine mounted boats, this requires you to position the boat somewhat forward in the lift. Turn wheel in direction of arrow clockwise to raise lift. A clicking sound is heard when properly raising lift. Turning wheel and wrapping cable in wrong direction may cause fast spin-down of wheel. Carefully bring the lift up until the bunks or cradles have secured the boat. Then, stop the lift and check to see that the bunks or cradles have automatically positioned themselves to the shape of the hull, as they are designed to do. If so, continue bringing the boat out of the water until it is about one foot above the surface. Stop the lift again and check the stability of the lift, particularly to see that it is fairly level and will not topple over. Finally, continue lifting the boat while paying close attention to the positioning of the lift until it is at its desired height. After loading and operating the lift, remove the boat and recheck that the lift remains level. If the lift is not level, the legs should be adjusted accordingly. Because the lift may settle and become unbalanced, the lift level should be rechecked two weeks after installation and periodically as needed. If the lift is without a boat in it for more than one day, raise the rack, pulleys, fully out of the water to help prevent corrosion of these parts. Always make sure that the boat is stored high enough out of the water to avoid wave action against the hull. 
A moving boat because of wave action will damage the lift and can take the boat off of the lift. 1. Do not overraise lift rack. Stop before top of rack hits cable loops attached to eye bolts. Overraising could cause damage to winch, cables, or other parts. 2. Do not over lower rack so slack develops in cable. Doing this could cause cable to jump off winch spool. This may result in sloppy wrapping of cable the next time you raise the lift, resulting in premature wear or cable breaking. Turn wheel down one or two turns past point when craft begins to float. This must always be at some point before the lift rack is contacting rear bottom beam. Then, turn wheel up slightly until clicking sound is heard to secure the wheel position and brake on winch. 3. Properly cover your boat or pull your boat's plug when the boat is in a raised position. Rainwater accumulating in your bilge can quickly increase your gross weight over the capacity of the lift. 4. Do not leave lift or boat on lift in water if ice formation is possible. Ice can severely damage your boat lift. Check cables for frays, corrosion, or breaks at least once a month. A cable breaking while the boat is in the lift could cause damage to the boat or the lift. Severe bodily injury could also occur. Spring and Fall Checks 1. Inspect nuts and bolts for damage, wear, or loose connections. Tighten or replace parts as needed. 2. Inspect lift frame, pulleys, winch, and pivot points for unusual wear, damage, or bent parts. Replace or repair as needed. 3. Check that the rack is level with the bottom of your lift. Cable stretching or settling of lift could require you to adjust nuts on high bolts. 4. Lubricate winch and wheel threads. Do not get lubricant on brake pads. Brake will fail and wheel will spin down if brake pads are lubricated. 5. Check and lubricate pulleys to ensure that they are turning freely. 6. Check eye bolts to make sure they are not working themselves loose.